And you know, so much has happened, but it's only happening because we're all there for each other, you know? And as much as some of us don't like to think it, I believe that each and every one of us is a leader, okay? Each and every one of us over here, plus our wider group as well, okay? Everyone over here is a leader. And what I like to think of a leader in life is I like to think of a leader as a wolf, okay? But in life, then there are two types of wolves. There's a wolf who leads sheep, and then there's a wolf who leads other wolves, right? And my question is, how do we become that wolf who, who leads other wolves? You know, once there was a professor in class, the 20 pound note out from his pocket, and he said, who wants this? And every one of them put their hand up, okay? And then what he done is he folded the 20 pound note up, and he said, who wants this? And still every one of the students put their hand up. Then what he done is he screwed it up into a ball, and he said, who still wants this? And everyone still put their hand up, okay? And then he picked the 20 pound note up, he put it on the floor and, he, and he, you know, he put his shoe all over it, he screwed it up and he said, who still wants it? And everyone still put their hand in. And he said, you know, just like this 20 pound note retained its value, you know, life is going to screw you up. Life is going to crumple you up. Life is going to fold you up and life's going to throw you down. You know, but you like the 20 pound note will always retain your value only if you value yourself. And that's what I wanted to talk about this morning, the two ways in order to be a wolf who leads other wolves is number one, if you value yourself, and number two, valuing others. But only when you value yourself, then only you can value other people, right? And you know, when I was thinking about valuing other people, the most important thing I could find is how we talk, how we talk about other people. You know, last time what we spoke about, we said that, you know, the most important muscle in the body was up there, right? Our brain. But you know what I think the most powerful muscle is in here, our tongue. You know, the tongue has the ability to kill someone within seconds or it can elevate someone within seconds, right? It was, it was actually Buddha who said that the tongue is like the sharpest of knives. It can kill someone without even drawing a drop of blood, yeah? It was Imam Ali who said, you know, a moment of patience and a moment of anger will save a thousand moments of regret. You know, one person came up to Socrates and he goes, he goes Socrates, I've got something to tell you about your friend. And he goes, hold on. He goes, he goes, don't tell me anything right now. He goes, whenever you want to tell me anything about anyone, make sure it passes three filters. Three filters and then only tell me. He goes, first tell me, is it the truth? And the guy goes, um, Socrates, uh, I I'm not sure. And he goes, hold on. So you want to tell me something about my friend, which may not be true. He goes, okay, tell me the next thing. If it passes the second filter, I listen. You know, he goes, is it good? And he goes, uh, Socrates on the contrary. It's, uh, he goes, then well, hold on. You want to tell me something which is bad about my friend? And on top of that, you don't know if it's true. Because what's going on? He goes, hold on, I may still listen. I may still listen, but only if it passes the third test. And he goes, is it useful? And he thought about it. He said, no, uh, Socrates, it's not. He goes, then don't tell me because I don't want to know. And he goes, always in life, when you want to talk about anyone else, pass it through three filters. Is there truth in it? Is it good? And is it useful? And he goes, only if it passes those three filters, then talk about it. Because that's how to build society, that's how to build communities, and that's how to build yourself. He goes, he goes, great minds talk about ideas. You know, average minds talk about events and petty minds talk about people. You know, and, and what I brought from that is, what I thought is, you know, the biggest thing that we can do is help each other in the way we talk. And how that relates to what we're doing here is, you know, in those moments of silence, it's how we push each other. It's how we talk about each other. It's how we talk to each other. And this morning, with the group we've got, I'm so happy to small a group this morning because what it allows us to do is tap into that. Let's tap into that power of really getting everything out of each other. Let's really push each other because some, when it's a smaller group, you know, we need that. We need the noise. We need the energy because your light will shine there and your light will shine there. And only if you shine, others will shine as well. So let's get up. Let's high five. What we're going to do, let's get to that goalpost over there. And we're going to start with the sprinter.